You are listening to another episode of TK's Two Cents. This is TK Coleman. Today, we're going to talk about lose before winning and win before quitting. TK, what are you talking about, brother? Let's dive in with the first tweet and we'll find out. Tweet number one says, if no one ever thinks you're losing, then you're probably not winning. All right, here's the deal. In order to win, you must either be in a game or a fight. In order to be in a game or a fight, you must face some form of opposition or some kind of obstacle. And in order to face some form of opposition or some kind of obstacle, that means there will be a period of struggle. And if there is a period of struggle, that means there will be moments in the middle of that struggle where if someone were to push the pause button, you would look vulnerable. You would look like you were losing. You would look like, oh my gosh. This person might not make it. We love to talk about struggle after the fact. When people overcome incredible odds, we talk about how brave they were and how persistent they were. But oh, the middle of that struggle and the vulnerability that characterizes our lives when our story is not yet done. I think about that movie about Christopher Gardner, The Pursuit of Happiness. Here's a guy that is working hard, but he just can't catch a break. And he is sleeping in a homeless shelter every night and he's got his little son with him on top of that. How embarrassing, right? And there's this day where he makes it to the homeless shelter too late and there isn't enough room. And so he has to sleep in a train station and he's got his son with him and they're in the bathroom in the train station and he's holding his son with him and he's sitting on the floor in the bathroom and he's just weeping because of the embarrassment He knows his ambitions. He knows his work ethic. He knows the size of his dreams, but he is at the lowest point in his life. No home, no room in the homeless shelter, sleeping in the train station, in the freaking bathroom. And right when he's in the middle of weeping over this, someone is trying to open the door to get in the bathroom. And you can just see this dramatic moment where he's holding that door shut with his foot, just keeping it closed, fighting to prevent anyone from coming in and seeing him in this condition. You ever had a day like that where it's like a bad day on top of a bad day on top of a bad day in the middle of a bad week? The moments in life where you feel like you're losing from within and you look like you're losing from without. If you've ever ever had moments like that, my message to you today is that is the only path to winning. Your struggles may look different from Christopher Gartner's or someone else's, but we all have them to struggle, to be vulnerable, to be questioned, to look like we're not going to make it is part of the human condition. And if you never look that way, you're never going to win because if you don't look that way, what that means is that you're never willing to put yourself in a position where your future is uncertain, where your success is is in doubt. That means you're never leaving your comfort zone. The only way to grow in life is to challenge yourself to do things you have never done. The only way to be successful is to leave your comfort zones behind and to venture out into the realm where there are no guarantees. And if you do that, you're going to look like you're losing. But the only way to win is to look that way. So if no one ever thinks you're losing, then that means you have a problem. That means you have a problem. That means you need to look within and you need to be true to yourself and say, what are the games I want to play that matter most to me? And then go play them. And when other people question you or laugh at you or worry about you, understand that you are experiencing the very thing that unites you to the story of every other creator, innovator, or successful person that ever lived. Now, when I wrote this tweet, I got an interesting response from one of my friends, Joshua, over at The Minimalist. And he says, the desire to win is a mental illness. Now, I've heard this idea before, and I, I, I believe I understand the perspective that it comes from, where there's sort of like this compulsive obsession that some people have with winning for the sake of winning. And I agree with Joshua that the desire to win in that way truly is a mental illness. If you are looking to dominate games because you are compensating for insecurities or you are looking to win for the sake of winning and it's draining your energy and it's stressing you out, that is something you need to take a second look at and ask yourself, 
am I pursuing meaning in an informed, mindful way? But there's another aspect to this as well. To play games, to explore the creative process is also an intrinsically human enterprise. And if you enjoy playing games and you enjoy winning and you don't obsess over determining your value as a human being by winning, then that can be a very natural, healthy human thing. So don't despise yourself for wanting to win, but also don't despise yourself for the struggles and losses that you will face along the way. Let's go to tweet number two. Before you quit your day job, stop despising yourself for having one. If you're at a place where you're thinking to yourself, man, I hate my job. I've got to move on to something different. I have I got to get out of here, TK. I am not going to look down upon that. I'm not going to try to talk you out of it. I'm going to tell you, do whatever you have to do to put yourself in a position where you can live your life on purpose. But before you quit your day job, please, please, please stop despising yourself for having the job that you have. If you're looking down on yourself because you work in fast food or you work at a gas station or you're doing something where you don't have a suit and tie that you wear to work every day or you're doing something that isn't flattering to other people or that other people don't respect you for, don't despise yourself for that. Here's why. As long as you are despising yourself because of the outer trappings of your occupation, then that means you are locating your value based on your position. And no matter where you go in life, as the saying goes, you're going to bring yourself with you. And so if you are the kind of person who believes that your value comes from your position, then how in the world are you ever going to succeed from there? Your success will be in other people's hands. You will never succeed unless someone else who has all the power puts you in a position that it makes you feel like you are valuable. The only way to succeed is the other way around. You have to start recognizing that your value comes from your self-respect. It comes from your sense of dignity. It comes from your work ethic. It comes from your pride. It comes from your willingness to walk into the room and say, no matter what my position is, even if it's the lowest on the totem pole, I am here to make the people around me better. I am here to make this company better. I am here to make this environment better than it was before I got here. That's the winning attitude. And you have to start practicing that winning attitude now. It's okay to leave one job for another job in order to make more money. It's okay to leave one job for another job in order to acquire more freedom. It's okay to leave one job for another job in order to be around people that you enjoy working with more. But never leave one job for another job merely because you feel worthless in your current job. Deal with that right now. Conquer that right now. Do whatever you have to do. Go wherever you have to go to put yourself in the best space to succeed, but start practicing a winning mindset right now. A winning mindset does not depend on your job. It depends on you. It's not about your position. It's about your pride. Have it now. That's how you lose before winning. And that's how you win before quitting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're listening on the podcast, please be sure to subscribe, write a review. If you're watching on YouTube, please be sure to hit the like button, leave a comment letting me know if there's anything you want to hear me talk about in the future, or if you have any additional perspectives that you'd like to share. And don't hesitate to share with a family member or a friend that you think might benefit from these riffs. Thank you so much for tuning in. None of you owe me your time. I am not entitled to an audience. I am not entitled to people listening to me. So I'm truly grateful for it. I appreciate your time and your energy and your attention. Go create the results that matter most to you. Peace out.